What is up YouTube? Welcome back to my VCV rack series and today we're going to be looking at how to tune different modules so that they're at the same pitch or at uh, variable octaves and how to sync different rhythmic patterns so that you can have various elements working together in your rack. Let's dive into the software and have a look. So if you were following on from last episode, we've got a very simple sound, but the problem is now if we want to start adding other layers, like maybe another oscillator or something like that, we might run into the issue of the oscillators being out of tune. Now, VCV Rack doesn't actually have any tuners built in, but there's a sort of little simple trick that a lot of the modular synth guys use to make sure that modules are aligned in pitch, and that is a scope. So I'm gonna talk you guys through how to use a scope to tune your oscillators. So let's just open up our menu and search for scope and then we can add the scope over here. So we wanna disconnect whatever was controlling the CV of our oscillator and we wanna connect the sign output into the X input of the scope. And you'll notice you're getting a graphic readout of the sine wave that's coming out of the oscillator, obviously. So if we add another VCO, just going to use one of the built-in ones and we send a sine wave to Y, you'll notice that the frequency is a lot higher. There's a lot more sine waves going on in this pattern. And we can use this frequency over here to actually sweep it down so that the two oscillators are at the same pitch. Once the sine waves have stopped moving backwards and forwards, it means that they are now at the same pitch. They don't have to be exactly, you know, in sync. As long as they're not moving backwards and forwards, then they are tuned to the same pitch. So with VC01 that's built into VCV rack, you'll notice that you don't have octave control. So it's a little bit harder to get a sort of exact pitch down. But this is kind of cool because this creates a sort of varying texture in the frequency of the sound. So this is good if you're using it for FM sources or something like that, because it's gonna give you that kind of like always very varying sort of analog response that a lot of the real world modular oscillators are going to give you. So if we head over to our even VCO over here and we tweak the octave, you'll notice that the frequency just changes, but the, the, the rate at which the sine waves are moving apart doesn't change. So that's another way to tell if the, if the two oscillators are tuned to different octaves is they're still not going to be moving backwards and forwards, but the frequency will be different. What we're gonna to wanna to do is let's create another mixer before our VCA so that we can mix the two signals before attenuating the volume. So at the moment it's just rhythmical because we, dis we did disconnect the CV inputs of our oscillators. So let's connect this row back to the CV inputs and you'll notice your scope starts to jump backwards and forwards. And this obviously means that the CV is being modulated by your sequencer. Cool, so our synth voice is becoming a little bit more interesting. But now, what if we want to start creating some drum or rhythmical elements? How do we sync that to our original sequencer? So there's various ways of doing this. I like to use a clock module. And unfortunately, I don't believe there are any sort of dedicated clock modules built into VCV rack. But like I explained, you can use an LFO at a square, a shape, or, you know, there's various other ways of doing this. But for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm going to add a clock module from a third party developer. I believe the one I like to use is called Tick and it's by Lucky XXL. So let's pop this over here and you'll notice that it's got a BPM readout. So this is pretty handy for this kind of thing because you're not sort of uh, limited to a CV or voltage value. It's uh, giving you an actual BPM readout. So if you want to sync it up with like a DAW or external synths and stuff, it becomes a little bit easier when you've got that readout. So let's send the 16th note output into the external clock input of the sequencer. And then let's listen to what's going on now. And let's pay attention to what happens when I vary the BPM over here. Now let's add a simple drum module that we can trigger like a kick drum or something like that. I'm going to use the macro oscillator, which is built into VCV rack. I believe this is a emulation of braids by Mutable Instruments. And you can cycle this edit knob over here all the way over to kick. Then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna add another sequencer. But the sequencer we can use for this can be slightly different. So it doesn't necessarily have to use CV values, we're just looking at different triggers. So there's various options here. TR sequencer by CF modules 
is very cool because it kind of emulates the look and feel of the Sequencer 3 or the Seek 3. And a lot of the features ha are, are similar in that, you know, you've got the external clock input, which you can route like this. Um, you can modulate the amount of steps and stuff like that. So you can start to get very interesting type of stuff going here. What we're going to want to do is send this 16th output into the external clock input then the gate output into the trigger input of our macro oscillator and the output over here into the second input of our original sort of output mixer. So let's set up a just regular sort of 4-4 pattern and now let's see what's going on. So our kick drum is a little bit high in pitch. So one thing we can do is we can actually just right click this to go back to the course over here. And I'm gonna show you guys another trick to that, that I like to use to tune um, oscillators as well as tune kick drums. And it's another third party module. Um, I believe it's called Ref Tone by Bog Audio. And this is cool because it gives you an accurate sort of uh, pitch output over here, but it also allows you to send the sign of that exact pitch out into a scope so you can tune specific other oscillators to a very specific pitch. So I'm not going to do that, but I'm sure you guys, you know, uh, judging by my explanation earlier of tuning the two oscillators together, I'm sure you can understand how that's going to work. Anyway, I'm going to send the CV out from this ref tone into the V oct input of our kick module. Then let's turn the volume up again and now we can actually tune the pitch and the octave of this kick. And then let's modulate some of these parameters here to get the most out of our kick sound. So that's how you deal with syncing and tuning different elements in your VCV rack patch. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know if there's any techniques that maybe I missed out on or maybe I could learn from. Let me know in those comments. If there's something that you want me to check out in a future video, also let me know in those comments. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.